Hey, what's up guys? My name is Gazzy B. Welcome back to the vlog. This is the sixth episode of the LA trip. Results for this the trip are on screen right now. Not off to the best to start so far, but I'm not concerned about it. We've still got a lot of poker left to be played. So it's really annoying. I went for a run this morning and it was miserable. And now I've arrived to the casino and it's beautiful. It's scorching hot today. Let's hope the heat at the tables is the same as the sun in the sky. So let's not mess around. Let's jump in and give you some poker action. Let's do it. All right, guys, in we go, sitting down at this very soft looking 510 table. I played about 20 minutes of 5-5 just before this and won a couple of hundred bucks. Some dude actually four bet bluffed me. I never thought I'd say that at 5-5. Moving on to our first hand of note at 510, we've got King Queen offsuit under the gun. I raise it on up to $30. This is gonna get called by the cutoff, the button, and the small blind. All these callers are non-pros. We go four ways to the flop. It is Jack, 10-6, rainbow, decent start here. I'm gonna see about my hand for $75 and the button moves all in. It's 545 total, so about 475 more for me to call. If my king and my queen are live here, we're swimming in equity, so I do decide to call it off. Looking for a bit of help, the turn is an offsuit five and the river is an offsuit seven. Really disappointed because I thought I was gonna win this hand for sure. I know it's king high and my opponent turns over pocket kings. Really surprised to see that. He was the second player to call pre-flop what a really tight play by him, but then again, he has just doubled through me. So who am I to critique? Next up, I've got Jack-10 offsuit on the button, under the gun is limped in for 10, and I make it $50 to go on the button, just about strong enough to isolate this hand. The small line is gonna make the call. Someone at the casino has texted me to give me the read that he's a very fun, fun player, and under the gun is called as well. We go three ways to the flop. It is King, King, Jack, Rainbow. I would happily see bet this heads up, but versus two players, I decide to just go ahead and check it on back. The turn is the three of clubs bringing a flush draw checks to me and no more checking by me. I bet out for $100. The small blind makes the call. The third player gets out of the way and we see a meaningless offsuit six roll off on the river. I'm going to bet out for value here for $225 and my opponent snap calls. I'm not sure if I've got the best hand given how quickly he's called, but I turn over my Jack-10 and my opponent mucks his hand. This is gonna undo the damage of the King-Queen hand that we saw earlier, sending us back into profit for the day by $20, let's go. Picking up the action for this next hand on the flop because of some camera issues. I've got Queen-Jack offsuit, I raised a $30 pre-flop. The button has made the call, we go heads up to the flop. It's Jack-6-4 with two diamonds. I bet out for $50 and my opponent makes the call. The turn is an offsuit seven. I keep barreling, I bet $125 versus this loose player. And he moves all in for $340. This is kind of what I wanted to happen, to be honest. I'm happily calling it off. And we see a lovely Jack roll off on the river. He's first to show, but he does look a little sheepish. So I say Jack and show my Queen Jack and turn it over. He laughs and shakes his head. Maybe I just sucked out here, but I'm not sure. He is the call pre with 7-5 offsuit kind of guy, so who knows? Either way, this is gonna set me up $430 for the day. Really nice turnaround after losing that first hand. Next up, I've got pocket fives under the gun. I raise it on up to $30. The loose wreck is gonna make the call on the cutoff. An allegedly good reg who I haven't played much with is gonna make $130 to go. That's another read that my friend gave me earlier. The big blind is gonna cold call, which means I get to call now as well. And the cutoff calls as well. Can we flop a set here? Nope, it comes down seven, six, deuce, flush draw. The bet comes in and I just go ahead and fold. You guys have seen a lot of me calling three bets with pocket pairs with multiple players in the pots and bricking out each time. One day soon, I'm gonna call a three bet and flop a set. Just you watch. Hovering about even for the day so far, but hoping this ace king can send us in the right direction. Under the gunners raised to $30, I call next to act. You can definitely call sometimes, especially when you've got loose gooses behind who will put in re-raises. And sure enough, the cutoff makes it $105 to go. I've got exactly what I want here. Under the gun is gonna make the call and I bust out the Birmingham back raise as we call it in the UK. I may get $375 to go. The three better is gonna make the call and under the gun calls as well. We're going three ways to this very bloated pot and it comes down four, three deuce with two spades. Bit of a swing and a miss here. I decide against sea betting because the cutoff range is so wide he could easily flop the pair and he's never gonna fold it. So I check it on over to him and he bets out for $700. Under the gun quickly gets out the way and I have to decide if I wanna shove for like 2K effective here or if I wanna just be a good boy and let it go. I decide on the latter. I don't 
really want to shove it in here and get called by like queen four suited or something like that so i make a very disciplined lay down my opponent doesn't show and we move on to the next hand i've got king queen all suit 10 minutes later in the hijack i raise it on up to 30 dollars once again multiple callers i get called by the cutoff the button the small blind and the big blind this is crazy stuff we go five ways to queen jack nine rainbow top pair is always good but five ways do we want to see back here i don't think so i just check it on over and it checks all the way around the turn is a king to give me top two pair definitely not strong enough to bet any 10 makes a straight so i check again and once again it just checks all the way around the river is another meaningless three nothing changes and it checks to me i think we can go for some value now i bet out for 90 dollars the small blind is the allegedly good reg that i've never played with before he's gonna put in the check raise here to 275 dollars now for the same reason that he thinks I don't have a straight here, I think he doesn't have a straight here. And what I mean by that is he thinks I'm going to bet all my straights on the turn to get value from the fun fun players. Just like I think he's going to lead out with all of his straights on the river to get value from all of the fun fun players. So I go ahead and look him up. I think he's bluffing here. I do make the call. He says you win. I wait for him to turn his cards over. He's got Jack eight of spades. After I show, a player at the table is so shocked by my call here. Oh my God. This is a really fun hand, but like I say, he doesn't think I can have a straight, but I don't think he can have a straight for the same reason. So I make the hero call and I get shown the bluff. 15 minutes later, I've got king seven of hearts in the big blind. The hijack is a very fun, fun player. He's limped in. The cutoff is the good reg. He makes it $50 to go. I'm going to call out the big blind and the hijack calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. It is eight, six, deuce with two hearts. The cutoff is going to see bet for $50 and I've got a flush draw, three cards straight. This is a really nice raising candidate, but I want to keep the hijack in the pot. So I go ahead and make the call the hijack does just get out the way and we see a lovely five of hearts roll off on the turn i check it on over to my opponent and he just checks it on back the river is the ace of spades i've got two options here i can either check to check raise or i can just bet out myself i decide to bet out and i decide to over bet i bet out for 325 dollars because i've got a pretty polarized range on this river and my opponent snap calls i turn over my cards and he shows me queen jack of hearts i can't believe he's got the third nuts and i've got the second nuts and i've won the absolute minimum really surprised by this turn check by my opponent but i can't complain too much it's a nice pot coming my way i'm now at 900 dollars for the day very smooth day so far let's keep it going all right guys outstretch my legs just played a really fun hand uh this dude limps under the gun off of like 400 we're playing 510 the hand before he limped under the gun someone raised and he went like <sighs> and limp shoved and it was very obvious they had a strong hand so he limps under the gun i've got pocket queens in late position and raised to 50 dollars a very fun fun player calls on the button the limper does the same thing ha <sighs> big sigh sticks it in for 405 dollars total action is on me we're quite deep with the guy on the button effective stack size should be on screen uh, and i decide to just call really easy to just re-raise there uh, and sort of isolate for sure but with the very fun fun player i think it's a pretty easy call so in the hope that he comes along which is exactly what happens he calls the 400s little sweat as we go to the flop it comes down nine four three with two diamonds that's perfect the limp razor gets up and tells the table he has nothing which is like okay buddy thanks for that i bet i for 700 dollars and the button just like snap folds so we kind of bloated this pot by just calling there's 1200 bucks in there brick on the turn queen on the river absolutely beautiful and we scoop in this 1200 dollar pot really nice as for the day itself really smooth so far i'm really enjoying it i'm seeing a lot normally when I, sometimes when you're playing you're really card dead it kind of sucks but I'm, I'm seeing lots of flops and stuff like that today so it's really nice so let's get back in keep the session going uh, and see if we can book a nice win today a very fun hand there with pocket queens how about we pick up the ladies again 45 minutes later under the gun is raised to 30 dollars i'm in middle position and make 100 dollars to go the small blind is going to cold call action is back on under the gun and he moves all in for a thousand dollars total i'm of course happily playing for a thousand dollars or so with pocket queens so i reshove to isolate i get exactly what i want the cold caller gets out the way I asked my opponent, do you want to show your cards? He says no. Some people are superstitious when they've got aces. I really hope that's not the case here. The flop comes down eight, seven, deuce. The turn is a 10. The river is a four. Both flush draws miss. And he shows me ace, king off suit. Let's go. Flipping there for about $2,100 and managing to hold. Really nice day so far. I'm up $2,200 and just kind of cruising. I am going to change tables now because mine really sucks, which means I have to take my stack down to $1,500 
I'm too lazy to count the chips in my backpack and work it all out and stuff like that, so no profit tracker for the rest of this episode. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Like I said, I love playing in the Commerce Casino, and check this video out, they're giving away free pizza, which is absolutely unbelievable. I have to resist though, it's not cheat day for me for a couple of days yet, instead I settle myself on a lovely steak with some vegetables. Really nice food here at the Commerce, I absolutely love playing here. Alright, next up I've got Pocket 7s about an hour and a half later, it's been a really tasty couple of hours for me. We've got the round of 20s on the go, remember no straddles in this casino, it's a round of blind raises. And we've got a few very fun fun players in the game, one of which is sitting to my left and he puts on the $40 blind, absolutely love it. The button is going to raise here to $80, very small raise, I'm going to call out the $20 straddle because I want to play with the $40 straddle, and then he's going to put in the re-raise, he makes it $280 to go. The button snap calls without even thinking about it, do I call here, do I just fold? The button is not a pro, he's not playing badly but he's not a professional player and the $40 straddle who put in the re-raise is a very fun fun player maybe we can back jam but in the end I decide it's $200 more into a pot of 600 with both guys having around 1 to 1.2k behind and one of them is a very fun fun player so I do make the call can we finally flop a set nope it comes down ace queen queen with two diamonds interestingly enough the button is going to stack the other player here with ace three offsuit it feels like every time i've got a pocket pair the pot gets bloated and i get priced into making a loose call and then miss and it's it's a bleed for me but you know what can you do the game is now permanently 5 10 with a blind 20 now i absolutely love that next time i've got ace 10 offsuit and the cutoff under the gun is limped in he's a new viewer of the channel hopefully he's enjoying the content so far i make it 80 dollars to go in the cutoff and the limper is going to make the call we go heads up to the flop it is eight eight deuce with two spades i've got that ace of spades working for me so i bet out for eighty dollars and my opponent makes the call the turn is the four of spades he checks it on over to me i would barrel here versus most players but i might have the best hand versus this guy so i do just check it on back the river is a lovely three of spades my opponent checks to me again and I go for value to the tune of $260. He makes a relatively quick call. He's actually got the same hand, but with the 10 of spades, and my ace of spades is gonna scoop in the pot. Really nice run out for me there. This guy's a very nice guy. Like I said, I really hope he's watching my content, and if he is, I hope he's enjoying it. Very next hand, the guys to my right decide to put on the $40 blind raise and the $80 blind raise. I have the option of doing the 160, but I just can't bring myself to do it. I am being a good boy today. I would have had Jack 10 offsuit, nothing special would have happened, but yeah, changed Gazzy B, years gone by, I would have happily stuck on the 160 there. Playing some real street poker here now, it's a really good game where we're getting down and dirty playing in the streets. Middle position is raised to $70 for this hand. He's a loose player, I make the call on the button because we've got a very, very loose goose who's a bit drunk as well. The small blind gets out of the way, we've got heads up to the flop, it is 9-7 deuce rainbow. This loose pre-flop call is paying dividends here with top pair, top kicker. The razor is going to bet out for $55 and I put in a sneaky raise with top pair here, I make it $200 to go. My opponent makes a relatively quick call and we see an offsuit 5 hit the turn. I decide to keep betting here, I bet $300 with my top pair, top kicker and again he makes the call. The river is the deuce and my opponent leads out now for $350, I'm of course not going going anywhere I make the call and he says you're good and just open mucks now this might look like a really bad call pre-flop but given the way the game is playing I'm sure you guys can understand why we're making calls like this like I say getting down and dirt in the streets tonight but absolutely loving it next hand my opponent puts on the blind 40 I've got ace king offsuit in the cutoff I raise it on up to $200 the button makes the call, the $40 straddle makes the call, and the flop comes down jack 5 for rainbow. The $40 straddle is going to donk out for $700. I sigh, I fold, but crazy action here at the Commerce Casino on a Monday. I absolutely love it. Onto our next hand now, we've got pocket fours in the small blind. The cutoff is a reg, he raises to $50. I make the call, and the big blind calls as well. The big blind is a bit drunk and a very loose goose. It's all happening here at the Commerce. We go three ways to the flop. It is Jack, three, deuce, all diamonds. I check, the loose goose checks, and the reg checks it on back. The turn is the nine of diamonds to give me a baby flush. We check it on over to the cutoff again, and he bets out for $50 here. I call with the plan of just folding to future aggression if he keeps barreling. The fun player gets out of the way, and we see the ace of spades hit the river. And now my opponent bets out for $325. Really interesting line from my opponent here. He's overbet the river. 
And he's repping the nuts now, which I don't think he can ever have because he would never check back the Ace of Diamonds on the flop with the very, very, very loose goose in the pot. So I think this is more likely to be a bluff because he just can't have the Ace of Diamonds here because he would always bet it on the flop. So I make a very ambitious hero call. He says, you're good. I'm like, please don't be bluffing with a six of diamonds or something. He turns over his hand. He's got six, five of spades. This might look a bit ambitious to call on the river. But like I say, I don't think this guy is going to check back the ace of diamonds on the flop. And I think that's all he's repping here on the river. So I go ahead and make the call. Really nice pot coming my way after being able to work out what was going on there. Very next hand, I've got king jack of hearts on the button. Early position is limped in for $20. I, of course, raise. I make $100 to go. And the loose goose in the small blind is going to shove for $450. It falls all the way back around to me. And you know what, guys? You've got to give action to get action. So I go ahead and make the call. He's actually got the same hand. He's got king jack of clubs. The flop comes down queen high with one club on it. But the seven of spades turn means that we are both going to chop this one up. I actually play around with the cards. I give myself kings and him jacks just as the jack rolls off on the river. I say, oh no, and change them all back again. All good, all part of the fun here at the Commerce Casino. This is my last hand of night racking up and heading to the cashier up. $3,214 for the day. Absolutely fantastic. All right, guys and girls, we're done as usual. Facts and figures for the session. We won $3,214. Let's go. Biggest winner of the trip so far. Results for the trip. We're now only down $9,464 back under. 10k i will take that hours played 49 my hourly is 192 dollars per hour uh, as for the session itself what a weird day the first half was kind of like abc good poker good action yada 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 second half i was a bit card dead for a couple hours and then it was just street poker it was absolutely class we had the 20 on the 40 on everyone was battling straddling no nits in the game it was a lot of fun i booked a nice win ran pretty smoothly all in all today uh, and I'll fucking take it. So that's going to do it for this episode. I shall see you in the next one. If you've enjoyed the show, click the sub button as always. Until next time, take it easy.